Hi everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. Uh, what I've been presenting in the last couple of weeks has been the relationship between the torque and the speed of a large power functions motor and what you find is that as the torque or the output load on that motor increases its speed will start to decrease. And what you find is if you calculate the power output of the motor it will start uh, low in this area here at low torque and high speed and then the output power will increase to a peak over here and then start to decrease again. So if you want to optimize the output power of the overall system, what you need to do is keep your motor operating within a certain power range. So for example, if you want to keep the power output above 80% of peak, you need to operate between these two points. And what that means is you need to switch gears once you reach this torque level and um, move back to this torque level by switching the gears between the output of the motor and the output of the overall system that you're working with. Uh, so for example in this case we're looking at 80% efficiency, we need to uh, switch at this torque level here about 15 down to a torque of about 5 and conversely the speed will switch between about 100 rpm and 250 rpm. Now one of the practical issues you need to solve when you're designing an automatic gearbox to switch between this point and that point is you need to be able to fine tune your gear switching mechanism to uh, switch at the correct uh, torque level or the correct speed level. So in this case about a torque of about 15 newton centimeters or a speed of about 100 rpm and to help me with that I've created this uh, I guess this torque uh, or loading gadget that I've created and the way it works is it's got uh, a number of these white clutch gears I've got 10 of them in this case and the way the clutch gears work is that they provide a certain level of resistance before they start to slip so for example if I've got a small clutch gear here I can rotate it like this and then if I put some loading on that white gear it will still keep rotating but once I increase that loading sufficiently it will start to slip and what that means is once it starts to slip like that there's a certain amount of torque that's required to overcome that clutch gear and make it slip and it's, it's between about two and a half and five newton centimeters uh, it might depend on the individual gear but what I've done I've put um, 10 of these in series and I can rotate them like this and then what happens is I can uh, select any one of these and block it with one of these small axles and that will prevent that one from rotating. So what that now means is overcome that resistance I, f I feel more torque on this input. And because I've got 10 of them I've got 10 selectable levels of torque that I can create. Anything from having two to pretty much having all of them selected and that creates well a huge amount of torque. In fact so much I, I can't actually turn it by hand. Um, so I can use this to uh, load up the motor and look at the speed and work out the torque that I'm actually applying in practice. Okay, so this is my experimental setup. What I've got here is a large power functions motor that's connected to a 9 volt power supply. The main axle of the motor, I'm going to measure the speed of that using this tachometer. What I've got here is some reflective material and then with the laser it can measure the speed. And what I'm going to do in this first experiment, just look at the behavior of the motor relative to different uh, torque levels that I can set with my torque device. So we'll just turn on the main motor and we'll just measure the uh, starting speed. Uh, so as you can see down there it's about 387 rpm uh, which matches pretty well with the uh, the graph that I've got uh, drawn below. We're just going to add some different torque levels so we're going to add first amount of torque or loading uh, drops down to about 360 rpm Add more loading by adding number two, drops down to about 337. Number three, oops, pop that. Uh, number three, we've got 312. Number four, drops it down to 280. Now remember, we're trying to get down to 100 RPM for that ideal switching point, keeping the power levels at 80%. So that's adding number five, we're down to 260 around that number. Number six, we're down to 240, 230. Number seven, that's 204. You can really hear the motor starting to strain somewhat. We're only at 200 RPM. We're trying to get down to 100. So we're adding number seven. 
Look at that, it's looking at 175 RPM. Number 8, it drops it to 146. Finally number 10. We're only at 120 and the motor's really starting to strain now. And now it does have an overload protection in there that if there's enough loading on that motor it will through the mister uh, shut off eventually so you can see it's going slower and slower and slower and it's pretty much shut down okay so that was a very interesting experiment uh, it's really showed that the theory and practice don't quite match it's all one well and good have a theoretical uh, graph like this where everything looks nice and linear and works perfectly but in practice we find that the RPM that we can actually go down to is nowhere near the actual um, theoretically calculated point which was at that uh, 15 uh, newton 10 meters of torque and 100 rpm for that switching point in practice it only looks like you can maybe go down to 150 at best and then we're really looking at a switching point up here so we're pretty much looking at an efficiency range of which is a lot smaller and of course we don't have to um, try to obtain this theoretical uh, level we can for example switch at this point and then move back to this point and then move across that curve again just means we're not using the entire range of the curve, but as I've shown in that experiment, that's actually not possible. Okay, so in the previous experiment, I demonstrated that running the motor down to 100 RPM is not practical, and the um, actual better switching point is probably closer to 150 RPM. Uh, so what I'm doing in this experimental setup is trying to tune the torque detector such that it will switch uh, the gears when the motor does go down to around 150 RPM. And what I've got in this particular setup is uh, two paths from the motor to the output. I've got this top path and a, a secondary path. And the reason for that is if you put the torque detector on the main path, you find you uh, will suffer great uh, torque and power losses. And one way around that is by having this two-path system. And what you find is, if you go through the uh, mathematics, is that if you've got a gearing ratio along path A, uh, the top path here on the diagram, and gearing ratio B along the bottom path and you add those up with a differential you'll find that the um, ratio of the power going through path A relative to the overall output power is A over A plus B so what that means is if you make A a large number and B a small number then uh, most of the power will travel through path A which is the main power path and a small amount through path B so what I've done in this case I've created a gearing ratio of, for A of 14 15 and a gearing ratio for path B of 1 15th which means about 93% of the power goes through the top path and 7% through the uh, torque detection path which minimizes the overall losses in the torque detector okay so this experimental setup on the right here I've got my torque creation device so I can create 10 levels of torque over here I've got reflective material on the main axle of the motor so I can measure the speed of the motor with the tachometer and down here you've got the uh, torque detection device at the moment I haven't got that connected to a gear switching mechanism but the idea is that once this reaches the top that's the uh, the correct point to change gears um, so all right so we'll just turn that on uh, measure the initial speed without any uh, loading on the output uh, we can see it's around uh, 380 so it's pretty close to the regular uh, motor speed without any loading as soon as I add one level of loading uh, it drops down uh, to about 325 so I think previously just for level 1 it was 360 and we can see the uh, torque measurement device is starting to move up a little bit uh, and of course like I said before we want to get to about 150 RPM in order to, to switch gears uh, now the uh, the torque detection is a little bit bouncy and that's because of the nature of the clutch gears they do have an asymmetrical torque uh, output it's, uh, it's not quite so the same all the way around. So I add level four. So you can hear the straining. Sorry, level three. Time to strain. We're down to around 200 RPM, and that's almost reaching the top. Uh, at this level four, we're now probably getting pretty close to the ideal switching point. And what we want at uh, this level here is that we can see the torque detector is right it's hard against the top, we're at 100 RPM, and that's the ideal switching point. Okay, so this setup is demonstrated that allows you to fine-tune that torque detector by changing the tension on the rubber band such that the uh, switching point for the gearbox is around that 100 to 150 RPM on the motor, which is the uh, ideal switching point as demonstrated before. Okay, my final experiment is around using a um, orange rotary catch as a gear-changing mechanism. So from this example here, we can uh, 
change gears by just rotating this handle and the gear switching mechanism moves in and out to engage or disengage that gear. Now I have been caught out in the past where if there's too much torque on the clutch gear you can find that uh, it's actually very hard to disengage. So if there's a lot of torque on that blue gear for example and you're trying to disengage that gear using the, uh, the switching mechanism with a rotary catch or just a simple manual switch it actually becomes very very hard to pull out. So what I'll be demonstrating in this particular experiment is two uh, versions of the same kind of idea. Uh, the first one uh, I've got it going at a low speed uh, with high torque and this one here is going at high speed with low torque and I'm just going to compare the difference in the amount of uh, effort required to disengage the clutch gear in each of those cases. Okay so this is the experimental setup for the first example. In this case up here I've got the orange rotary catch allowing me to engage and disengage the uh, gearing mechanism between the input and the output. I've got a 1 to 5 gearing which means uh, it's been down geared, that means we've got a slow speed on this axle but a high torque, uh, that's very important. Uh, and then of course on the output I've got my torque creation mechanism. So I'll just demonstrate what happens when I turn that on. When it's uh, on like this, it's relatively easy to disengage uh, that output using, using orange rotary catch. However, as soon as there's some loading on the output by, for example, adding two levels of torque, you can hear the system straining. And I'll just use this rubber band to demonstrate how much uh, effort's required to now change gears on that rotary catch. So you can stretch and stretch and stretch it, and it takes a huge amount of force to rotate that orange rotary catch. Probably a lot more than what you're going to get from an automatic uh, gear or torque protection mechanism. So again this just demonstrates how much force is required. You hear that big clicking sound as well. It uh, makes it very difficult to change gears. Now for the offset experiment I've got the same setup. I've got the orange rotary catch again disengaging and engaging between input and output. But the main difference here is that I've got the gearing in reverse. So instead of having a a down gearing 5 to 1, I've actually got an up gearing of 5 to 1, which means that now we're getting a very high speed but very low torque. And that should mean that the effort required to rotate uh, the rotary catch should be a lot less. So let's see what happens. We'll first disengage the torque mechanism, turn it on. You can see it's going a lot faster, and again, it's, uh, it's so easy to disengage. It just disengages by itself just from gravity. It's quite amazing. Uh, and if we now add two levels of torque, and here it's straining, um, and the effort required to disengage that gear again using the rubber band, it's, uh, it's a switch just straight away. So there's very little torque, it's very easy to switch, it doesn't make a, a big crunching sound, the only crunching sound is simply due to the speed of the rotation of those gears, I mean that, that's a different issue again. Uh, but again, this really demonstrates that it's really important to look into the amount of torque on your uh, orange rotary catch when you're switching gears. Uh, it always works well when there's no load, but of course when there is loading, you'll find it's quite different. Okay, so the conclusion from today's experiments is that you can't just switch your motor at the ideal point of 100 RPM. It's close to the stalling point. It needs to be closer to 150 RPM. I've also demonstrated that you can fine-tune your torque detec detection mechanism to switch around that 150 RPM for the motor and finally that it's very important to make sure that the torque on your orange rotary catch when you are switching gears is relatively low so that it is possible to switch gears without any problems. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.